Hey. Balls. Balls. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a Excellent. unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Uh. Big shit, uh. big shit. Uh. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Uh. Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss Talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss Talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss Talk. Yeah, everybody on it. It's a unique hustle. Hmm? Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique okay. hustle. It's your boy ECO. And I'm on the most by the way, and we create content every damn day. Hey man, it's going down, man. We over here at Boss Talk 101 once again, man. And guess what, man? We got some special guests in here today, man. They really don't need no introduction, man. I I uh man, I've been trying to get both of these guys on the same panel, man. It's going down, man. I finally was able to make it happen, man. We got my boy Melvin Farmer and we got my boy OG Percy in the Percy. building. Shout out to Supreme and uh, Mayhem and all the people that's uh, are sitting around this August panel. Yo, <laughs> what's going on, Melvin? Oh, nothing, man. Just out here hitting and being the corners out here all week. Been having a wonderful time. Uh, Texas been showing me a lot of love, and we're going to top it off tonight, man, and put this shit on fire tonight. Hey, man. So, hey, man, I, what I wanted to do, man, just have some questions. You know, being that you you know you out of the California area, OG Percy is in here, man. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, man. okay, hey, okay. Hey, man, he, okay. hey, man, this man out of the Fort Worth area. Uh, Texas, that is the great state of Texas. Cali coming in the building, so mm-hmm. and uh, I just wanted to try to, you know, just have a have a discussion, man. I always wanted to know how those worlds, you know, pretty much. Uh, I, I know Percy. Uh, Percy is known, man, on that internet, and mm-hmm. Melvin, you known on that internet, and, and and have you guys ever met? No, sir. Never met before. No, sir. First wow, time. first time, like, man. You know what? Time. So. Good feeling. Have, but you, I know y'all heard each other. Yeah, yes, we sir. conversated was over the phone prior to when uh, Charleston was in uh, what uh, California back in the day. Uh, Jody and all them. I had sent Baba Lou down here mm-hmm. when he had first came back. So I think we had chatted before. But I know uh, uh, I've always heard his name. His but, name, yeah. yeah, it's always brought up. Dope man. So you know, cause like like I say, uh, and I and I asked this question with a gr- a different group of people, but. California, I had California, Texas in here. And I always be asked, thinking in my mind, like, to be, and, and Melvin, you know, from from long time ago, the, the with, with being the crib, from being in California, and then someone being uh, affiliated with crib in Texas, how does, I mean, does that even, does that merit the respect? Or do they even, do they, because my cousin's from L.A., and when they would come down, it wasn't really a thing to where they was like, they come down, I take them to Shreveport. They act like, hey, man, you know, they solidified and what we doing wasn't or whatever. So how do you look at that? Well, uh, before we had expanded, when it was just uh, East Side and West Side Compton, before they had even left, let alone uh, the city from the zip codes, uh, it went through expansion, particularly when the drug came out. The drug game, game came out about 77, and they started floating but I've always looked at it like this. Uh, uh, we don't die, we multiply. Wow. So when we started, that's when that saying started. And as you see today, uh, uh, the guys from my area, uh, the original one, our attitude where it's, uh, you sign up for this, there wasn't a lot of ways you can get into it now. Mm-hmm. So I've always respected Crips or Bloods or somebody that's from this culture and a lot of guys will tell you when they ask me something, I say, let them pick their bones. And so it's all a level playing field for me. I don't look at it as uh, one's a leader or nothing. When I come, I check in with these men, uh, just as you would a home. Uh, when you have a right to expectation, you don't come and knock at somebody's house unexpectedly. So as far as me personally, I give everybody the same respect because I'm a seed. They are uh, the roots of it. And so I look at them all as one big total family. You got to remember, I came in when we were united. Most of them come in where they come in divided, crip on crip, blood on blood. That's a different language to me. Okay. And, and OG Percy being when you see somebody that from the California area, do you? how do you look at them as far as the representation of what you guys represent in Texas? Let me see. Let me see. They all right with me. <laughs> I, I'm saying that to say I've never looked at a crib from California. 
Okay. Yeah, that part. So you never met? Nah. Never really? met, never seen one, never shook hands. But today, you got to shake yeah. hands. That's what with it's all one. about. The with unity. a real one. Yeah, with yeah. a real like one. Man, On top like of that, man. Like huh? Okay, <laughs> okay, 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 so, okay, okay. So, so okay. when, so tell me, like you, I remember I had asked you on the show before, like, uh, how did you end up uh, ending up dealing with just the crib side? And you said it was because everybody around you was uh, yeah. bloods, and you just side, yes. you didn't you didn't want to you didn't want to deal. Yeah. You, you wanted to be different. Yeah, always, always. What what made that what made that stick out in you to be different in a time where everybody else would have pretty much folded and because of the guys you know you grow up with these cats and okay. um, then all of a sudden you see him with a, a blue rag on him well you already know he ain't built like that 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 he I, they ain't built like that I don't want to be them and that's how you did that's I felt like I was tougher than them anyway and uh, I felt like if you were gonna gang bang. It ain't no fun to be in the hood with the same game. Oh, so you, I want to live dangerous. I was on it for real. So you want to become the opponent? Yes, sir. So that's a difference in, in, in the way like you guys started. When you guys started, it was a different time, a different era. You talking the 70s? No, 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 no. Look how he, cause he came in. Okay. Same way I came in. We come to you. It's a talent. So it wasn't no easy road. I promise you, every opponent back then uh, uh, were worthy opponents uh, uh, that you can speak about. We talking about Raymond Washington, Tookie, mm. uh, Lil James Compton, Barefoot, Pookie, Michael Conception. I can name them all day long, just all day for the 50 years that I've been around. But mm. like I say at the beginning, when we came in, it was nothing but uh, your face was your ID and your pistol was your passport. Mm. So that's how everything was encountered. Because at that time in our days, you couldn't tell this before colors. You couldn't tell Crip from blood because that wasn't even thought about. In fact, it wasn't even no sets. Eight trade, 60s, just when it was West Side and East Side Compton. So it wasn't just like we were dominant. No, that, that, that wasn't the case. Everybody from the early 70s uh, were very real respecting and about that business. Yeah, and, and, and so when you, when, you, uh, when you think about those times uh, versus today's time and how it's expanded, is it, is it uh, something that you would have thought would have happened, you know, like the way that it spread it? No. Nah. Because it spread across the world. It didn't just spread from state to state, you know. Well, as far as me, uh, uh, and others, we never thought about uh, it, it expanding or going into what it is now. We were just young kids. Uh, we didn't know where we was lost, uh, not misguided, because wasn't nobody telling us what to do. See, we didn't have, uh, contrary to what people think, Raymond them, they had an army and this and that. No, they were the faces of uh, the Crips, but they were 18. We 14, 15 year old juveniles. Uh, before they even had this type of situation where we was getting two or three years uh, for homicide, uh, carjacking was hmm. called GTA, get caught with a gun, they give it back. So a lot of the things, uh, most of the guys from my era, from 71 to 75, from 14 to 18, we either got a, a 25 or better arrests in a four year period, or either they got a uh, murder conviction, or either if they still alive today, they have over 25, 30 years in prison. Two of those three they usually have uh, before they was 18. So uh, we had a free wing. It was the wild, wild west, and uh, but it was honorable. Wasn't people getting uh, uh, involved that wasn't involved and signed up for it. So a lot of innocent people wasn't getting uh hurt as it is now where anybody, because of the area you stay in, uh, it could be detrimental. Uh, so, wow. I understand it. And, and so, and you mentioned prison uh, along the way. Um, I know that in, in, when you're incarcerated, um, that becomes a deal as well, um, where there's members of uh, Crips, Blood, different uh, Muslimic faith, all these different sectional groups um, and and it become it's a different it's like a different structure when you inside of the inside of the walls than it is when you outside. Actually, it would almost seem as if it's more 
more like like it's more togetherness when you're inside. <clears throat> what do you think about that? You had no choice but to be together when you're inside. You understand me? Uh, a lot of a lot. Of, uh, shout out to Melvin, man. I'm uh, get this. <laughs> get, I, now I gotta get the. Uh, Get the star stud out of my head. Oh, bro, no, it's man. all good, good to man. Meet him, man. Good to meet him, man. <laughs> good to meet him. Zero. Yeah, that's yeah real love, talk. Man. That's good Cali, karma, man. man. Real <laughs> talk. Good, good spirits can feel hey, good spirits. Man. But anyway, man, um, it's a difference. When you outside in that world, you can run from hood to hood. See, that's what them youngsters know. When they when they get on this game, this game, see, I, I don't I don't gang bang. I don't gang claim, and I don't got nothing to do with a gang. I, only just, I got one game. I'm in God's game now. That's my game. That's my only game, one-on-one. Hey, on one. And we know that now, but, but back... But, 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 but I'm, I'm going to stick to the topic. Watch okay. this. But back then, you know, these they get in these games, and it's time to go to um to reap the benefits of what the game has for you, which is the penitentiary or the grave. When it's time to reap the... One thing, they, you know, when you in the streets, I can I can hit you and run over and hide in, in his hood. Hit him, run over and hide in his hood. Hit him, go hide in her hood. But when you go to the penitentiary, there ain't no hiding. Ain't no hiding place. You run into them all now. It, it's time to reap the benefits. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no togetherness. You go in the penitentiary and find out them niggas in there just as ruthless as the ones in the streets. But there ain't no out of it. Ain't no, ain't no walking away. Ain't no, now nah, you can get jumped out. Nigga, mash you out. Nigga, some, primp, some of them crips in there when they go in there, I'm going to tell you some real, you know, you know, I, you know how I get in. Them niggas be hoes. They come in there and they they, they 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 not the niggas they is in the streets. They not that crip in the street when they is behind them bars. You can do a lot of like I tell you, ain't no pistols in the penitentiary. I got a major announcement to make, but I'll wait to break that later. Mm -hmm. right now, let me uh, <laughs> Go uh, a little bit about California prison system. Yeah. Y'all read my book, The New Slave Ship, A Ship That Does Not Sell, that deal with this uh, new industry called uh, prison. Uh, but uh, when we first went to prison, there was no Crips. Uh, there were very few, because most of us were juveniles at the time in 71, 14, 15, 16, 17. So uh, when we got to age to where we can be uh, uh, sent to prison, uh, everybody also need to know that California is the only prison uh, a state that has uh, no segregation. They segregated. Uh, when I was in Georgia prison, I don't have Latino facilities, whites, but California is the only state in the United States that segregate, and this is why. Uh, most people don't know the difference between a street gang and a prison gang. Like you say, right, you don't right. go in there with a pistol. We call it you check your guns in at the county. <laughs> okay. So now you're coming up close. You got to come yeah. up close. But what happened when we first started going to prison, here it is, these guys, you got the Right after George Jackson, the Soledad brothers, uh, Fleety Gromgro, Hugo Pinnell, rest in peace, who got killed and slain in Folsom after 50 years in solitary confinement, and to his daughter, Allegra, my own girl. Uh, but anyway, so now when we got to prison, now you got the BGF, Black Gorilla family, you got the Black Panthers, you got the ABs and Brotherhood, you got the Mexican Mafia, you got the Northern Familia, you got the Muslims, you got the police, and then later on you start breaking it into CCOs, Crips under Constitution, uh, Blue Notes, uh, Took in them, Vanguards, uh, Black Coats, uh, UBN that's in New York, Peabody and uh, all them that started that. So when you're in prison, it's a difference, believe it or not, in California, it turns into racial. It turns into racial. Uh, you got the black seat in one section, Mexicans over here. Uh, when they was filming America and Me in Palm Hall, they was giving us two packs of cigarettes to sit out when uh, James Omis and them were there. So in California in prisons, they're very violent. Yeah. Very. I, and Texas, too. That's why I let it uh, go, because they got the Texas. Yeah, yeah. You, you know how the game yeah, goes. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and we got Supreme here, y'all. Just yeah. want to make that announcement. What's happening? Man. What's happening? What's happening, Supreme? So you, 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 you on this August panel now. For sure. I'm honored. It's a pleasure. 
Okay. So, no doubt. And, and, and the thing, I don't want you to hold back on the questions that we have for these brothers because at the end of the day, there's a lot of things. And I got mayhem. I'm, I'm going to be pulling him too. Uh, it's just, I think it makes for good conversation. I think it makes for uh, education. And it also shows unification. And, and, and at the same time, it shows growth. That you know that we would still be here after all these years and and still be able to have lived and to talk about it because a lot of people didn't. So I, I just like the fact that you brothers came over to uh, spend time and conversate with us and make history. Yeah, this history right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like sure. it, man. I, I got a lot of good good guys that's in here today, so I like this one here. But definitely, man, when you look at um, the Texas prison system, that all of them prison. We 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 incarcerated. We locked up. Um, different, different rules, somewhat, but same situation, right? He's, he said some of the real. It's only three games in the penitentiary. Three, might got a half one in there. He might throw them, but it's white, black, and brown. That's it. It's only three games in the penitentiary. That's real. I'm in, the, yeah, three. Uh, I tell people when I got in the penitentiary, I was a black man before I was a crip. I, I, I run and that that's back what to you. Mm -hmm. I was a black man street. before I was a crip. Um, I didn't went to the penitentiary now. I didn't went to jail system. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I did time right here in this city, Dawson. Shout out to them boys on Dawson. It's shut down now. I did time on Dawson unit down and Hutchison down here. Um, they don't, they don't, they don't respect the game no more. The game didn't change. You know they protect them now. They got a, they got a thing on the sand, on the wall with a rat with a sack in his hand, and on the, on the top of that sack it says extortion. Oh, you will be handled. You know, they babysit them now. Uh, they put that titty in their mouth when they cry. They lock everybody up. If he say, he hit me, everybody going to jail. Everybody going to lock up today. Uh, Texas prison is black, 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 white, and brown. I was in a penitentiary down here in, in Dawson one time. I went to visitation and I came back. Tales from a crib. <laughs> and I came back. I came back from visitation. My celly was sitting on a bunk and he was beat up. And I was looking, I'm like, God damn, what happened to him? I said, no, he a blood. He a blood. He was, and he was told down, but he was my celly. I'm like, what happened to my celly? Maybe like, you know, the, the Mexicans over there jumped on him. I looked around. See, I knew how to separate a black man from a crip. He was a blood, but he was beat up. And I asked him what happened. He said three Mexicans jumped on him over. They jumped on him. I threw crip out the window at that time. That's a black man. So what? So what? So what? Everybody do while they was jumping. Well, you know that's that's a blood. You know that's a dog business. That's such such. So they forgot that they was black before they was anything. You dig what I'm saying? So y'all sit there and let three Mexicans jump on a nigga. That what y'all telling me? Well, that night, um, this goes down in and this goes down in Dawson, downtown Dallas history. That night, when I seen my little partner beat up, he was a blood. I told all the Mexicans. Y'all three the one that jumped on him. We going out to wreck tonight. We're gonna show y'all what it feel like to get jumped on. And so they say, say, no, 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 my friend, you don't have nothing to do with that. You have nothing to do with that. We can jump on y'all in here, or we can go to wreck. So everybody decide we're gonna go to wreck and we're gonna run the Mexicans down through there. Well, you know the Mexicans ain't gonna let you jump on their people. Hmm. So have y'all wanna do this? That night, um, OG Percy um was uh <laughs> Was arrested for inciting the biggest ride in downtown Dawson. Wow. Yeah. And we had like 175. When they walked in there, they were slipping on blood on that gym floor. They were skating on blood. We, we, we were mopping them up. Um, they jumped off. I told the SA, I said, man, uh, we want to look at your partners. And he said, you know we can't do that. You know we can't do that. Well, we ain't nothing else to talk about. If we can't get them one-on-one, -on -one, well, I guess when I looked in the gym, the sad thing about, you know, like you were saying, something that you mentioned, when you on call, you on call. See, a lot of these youngsters, they get in them gang, come to the penitentiary, want to be a gang member, then when they get gangster, and them knives come out, you know what I'm saying, they don't want to play no more. Yeah, uh, and they got to use their hands, they don't want to play no more. When they can't hit you a mile away, they don't want to play no more. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> And that's how they go, but um, no, that's, I, I get it. When man. they can't hit you a mile away, they don't want to play. They want, they want, they don't want to hit you straight up. Now they, they want, no, they want like he said, don't get in arms reach. But to make a long story short, um, that night on Dawson, um, now we um set off a big ride down there, and it wasn't. It ended up being Crips. They 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 labeled it Crips on on Thongo Blast. 
you know, on the essays. But it wasn't about that. It was just black on brown. Wow. That was about it. Uh, let me ask you something, uh, Melvin. Were you ever locked up with uh, Tookie? Did y'all ever do time together? Mm-hmm. Right How many? before Tookie, uh, now I'm old enough to go to jail with him. Yeah, yeah, when I met yeah. him, we, he was an adult already. That's right. 18, uh, yeah. so now I'm going to prison. But when he got arrested in 79, um, February, I was getting out of halfway house from doing two years for a jewelry store robbery. So I'm going over there to holler at him. In fact, I got a picture. He was really on the porch. I just didn't take no picture. So uh, I tell Tookie, man, uh, you know, uh, this house you stand at, uh, they got something going on where they say they tell him. Wow. I say, I don't, because they wanted me to jump the fence. He back there in the back lifting weights, had on some overalls, curling him and my other homie at that time, Blackie, Alfred Cowan, which ended up being his co-defendant and my other boy, uh, uh, Bam. And uh, I told Tuck, man, I'm not jumping that gate, man. I think this dude telling, cause in our era, we ain't know nothing about no snitch. And so then later on, uh, Tuck went to jail in February and uh, I was with Raymond Washington a day or two before he got slain. So 79 was a pivotal year. Wow. Tuck went to jail, Raymond Washington got killed. And then I went to uh, for a jewelry store robbery uh, February where they arrest me. That's when we were in jail. So we going to the same court out in uh, 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 Palace Verdes because you'll get busted in the, in the city, but you end up going damn near to Beverly Hills. Might as well call it Gilligan Island. Ain't mm. no blacks down there. So uh, we was going to court. He'd be in the cage, and back then, uh, Tookie was so big, he couldn't put handcuffs on his back, so they had a chain that they wrapped like a slave I chain. Seen no, I used to witness this when we were wearing uh, shirts, blue shirts, and they give you Levi, uh, Levi's before they start turning into uh, uh, jumpsuits and stuff. So yeah, I was in, t- in jail and we used to pass notes or I might be going to jail in uh, Santa Monica and I was going to court with the Mendez brother, that's Kyle and Lyle Mendez. Mm-hmm. Uh, they on death row uh, for killing their family over financial gains. Right. And it's amazing. No, they didn't even get the death penalty. They got an LWAP life without. Right. And this is for those death penalty proponents. Uh, Kyle and Lyle Mendez killed their family for financial gain and that's puts them in the category uh, to get the death penalty, but they didn't. Tookie did the same crime, where they both could have got the same time, but one got life, the white guy, and uh, uh, Tookie got executed. So yeah. let's remember that mm. when we go to our uh, voice and talk about uh, the death penalty. But back to the thing, yeah, we would send, uh, 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 he stayed in uh, high power at that time about four years. So I was in there with him. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, I always thought about that. What you got for us today, Supreme? So, so it's been a, a just a slight little rift between Texas and Cali when it comes to cats like yourself. So to have y'all here is is very important for for both coasts. Um, and I want to ask y'all, what do y'all feel like we could do having you two guys out here healthy, you know what I'm saying, and willing to speak and help? What, what do y'all feel like some things we can start to make this this, this unification a, a glorification? <laughs> oh, well. Uh, well, as for me, uh, I feel anything that you're trying to do, uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's got to be solution-based, but also the first part in uh, 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 coming to any type of thing, uh, situation is to create dialogue. And that's what's going on how, now here. But also, more importantly, uh, with this age of social media and so many ways to come out uh, to get information out, audio, video, or print, uh, it's good that we have a platform such as Boss Talk and these other ones when they're giving out positive information as opposed to other type of information Hmm. that adversely affect our community. Uh, As far as myself, uh, I don't look at it. I'm past the stages of game banging and paving the streets. My mission is bigger than being a, a internet troll. Mm-hmm. I want to give back to the community. Gotcha. He paid his dues. A lot of us, we know what we did to hurt the community. We know what we done to help the community. But so many times, uh, uh, people uh, that had it boost to the ground when the camera's not around, their voices aren't heard. 
So now uh, this has been my boy. I got love for him. We tied at the hip just like you, and we're just trying to show people it's another way of life and that God has a, a plan for all of us. See, I don't look to man no more because a man. man will take your life. Mm. But God can give you a new life. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's how I get down on that. But more importantly, it ain't just about me. When I come here, I come here as a credible messenger, a representative of my community, uh, uh, where I deal with restorative justice and as well as redefining the community. So as me as being a messenger, it's my job to just try to match up to where uh, a lot of times when you're in the frame, you really don't see the picture. Mm -hmm. That's right. So mm. I see the picture because I'm not in that frame, but I live that life. So it's an honor and a privilege to be here. And I don't look up, you know, I don't let, I don't like to be called OG, big <laughs> homie, because it's always a we. It ain't about that. It's always been about a, a, a me, a, a we, where I try to stay honest and face, stay fair and just stay true to the game, man, but also stay in my lane. Man, that's so. Hey, what, you, what you got, Percy? To answer that question, man, I feel like it's a must-see. Yeah. A, a must-see. For, for two, 2022, it's a must-see. And I'm like him. I'm going to keep banging on that TV, banging on the TV, and banging on the TV until they get the picture. Look, I got something else for y'all too, man. Uh, you uh, know, say what you. I'm, I'm going to go there, E. Real Boss quick. Talk 101 is is the platform where it goes down, where we ask the questions that can change lives and make okay. a difference. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, right both, both of you, both of you brothers, man, uh, uh, are, are, are well familiar with, with with Brother Charleston, and y'all had y'all, you you know, there's no beefs or nothing, but y'all had y'all quarrels on the internet with with, with Brother Charleston, uh, and. This this is not a a, a, a bashing statement because I, I love Charleston. You know what I'm saying. We used to talk frequently, and I saw Percy do a live recently where he was, you know what I'm saying, letting people know. Well, at first I saw Charleston say he's no problem with 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 OG Percy. Then I see Percy have a, a captivating live last night, and you know what I'm saying, put things in perspective. And I I, I spoke with you, uh, brother Melvin, and uh. I, I, I know that deep down there's really no there ain't no issue you know what I'm saying so would y'all want to speak on on anything with that as far as uh, uh yeah uh to answer your question exactly like you said this is a must see this is a must see this is a must see because this right here um is unity yeah that's right something that was tore apart the last time this gentleman came yeah that, yeah come on it's it's a must see. Um, as far as people coming back together, it's a must see that somebody can get along. It's a must see that Charleston can see that he can become the person that he really is. See, I, I, I fuck, I, I mess with Charleston. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Charleston, you know, say if it wasn't, if it wasn't no Charleston, wouldn't be no me. If it wasn't no me, wouldn't be no Charleston. We've been the hottest thing going back. I'm the only nigga go blow to blow, toe to toe with him, with this mic. You dig what I'm saying? Verbal uh, assassins like, Ver like, like, like Big yeah. Melvin. But, you know, I, but, but I just takes my, my energy goes this way. It don't go that way, you know. Uh, he got a role to play. Uh, yesterday I did a live on Charleston. Yes, I did. Shout out to what? Shout out to the white boy. Uh, I did it on Eyeball. You know, I talked to Eyeball. You know, I don't fuck with Eyeball. You know, <laughs> you fuck with Eyeball? I don't fuck with Eyeball. <clears throat> but I fuck with Charleston. And if y'all do know, Charleston is Eyeball. That's what I call it. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. Y'all catch that in a minute. But um, as far as Charleston being a person, I, you know, um, I can't apologize for nothing. He had to be an old man standing on his own two feet when it come down to Melvin. You know what I'm saying? They got they. I don't know what, but but I know Melvin is. I, I watched Melvin in that interview. As a matter of fact, I turned around and y'all know I don't say nothing to Charleston. But when I seen the interview with Charleston and Melvin and the other guy that was sitting over there, I felt like something had to be said. You know, and I, I threw a blow, you know, which I was wrong. I shot at him. I swung at y'all. I threw a blow at him. You know what I'm saying? Because um, this is a must-see. People need to see that it shouldn't be no that blog after that blog, that rapper after that rapper, that nigga after that nigga. Because it's always, people always complaining about, niggas always talking about killing niggas, killing niggas, killing niggas. As soon as a cop kill one, everybody looking crazy. But it's all right for it's us real. to kill each other. You know what I'm saying? This is a must-see. I wish Melvin, you know, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty dude, you know what I'm saying? Because as long as we talking about getting along, I'm going to be here. Anything else, I'm out of here. Yeah, I get that, it. That's my platform. I'm here to build, not destroy. 100. Good. Yeah, so, as far as me and Charleston, uh, 
I don't wish no man no ill will. Uh, I understand uh, this entertainment. It's like this with me. You got newspapers where you got certain sections, the sports, <laughs> you got uh, uh, the crossword, the comics, and everybody don't read the same section. Let's go. Yeah. And that's how I look at it. That's why I don't look at social media. So at the end of the day, people need to understand, I put Charleston right. I managed Charleston right from the beginning. Let's go. When he came to California. I got him on the show, so I can name, I got a lot of videos. In fact, I was out here February uh, where we did a special, then we was going to do another one. I let him host a lot of Elsa Alonzo and all that. But at the end of the day, I am who I am, and you're going to put some respect on that. Mm -hmm. That's period. It ain't nothing personal. It's just business. Now, uh, also, uh, I'm a civil rights activist where I can make shit get national, global when I find a civil rights violation. So I don't do no verbal gymnastics, nor mm -hmm. do I do no uh, Adolf Twitler shit on the <laughs> internet talk. I'm going to come and hurt you. I'm the verbal assassin in this game, but I'm going to hit you where it hurt. See, so with Charleston White is, I know Charleston White probably better than anybody outside of these brothers. So they look at it, well, he's still around Charleston White and this and that. Let me clarify how this game go. This man know Charleston White and probably grew up and know his mama, sister, brother, and everybody else. And this go for the nation. Over this time period of this culture, over 50 years, because of the segregation recreated by our own and the franchisides, that's the killing of one own brother and sister, or either by friendly fire when you hear about people get killed with a gang member, so whoever do it, and it was an accident. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I always say it's easy to kill a stranger. Hmm. It's very easy to kill a stranger, and that's what happens out these streets. A lot of guys don't know each other. But back to Charleston White, I have concerns with his presence when it comes to being around Chip. I'm a board member on uh, Youth Mixed Martial Art with Cynthia, uh, Big U's uh, cousins, and his uh, uh, other cousins as well as other champions. But our job is to identify people that could be a threat to children because the athletes are uh, children 6 to 18. Uh, uh, and it's, you know, Charleston White to say, see, I do fact checks on what they say. Mm -hmm. See, we're doing fact checks because a lot of people, he's not a builder. He's trying to build itself. So somebody got to step to him. Mm -hmm. He had stepped to him. I could step to him. Like I say, you know, I've been here all week. He can come tomorrow. I got <laughs> till 7 o'clock sundown tomorrow. And he can step to the mic and let's see, because I heard him say uh, he got characters. That's who he is, the character. I know that's a character. Those are clowns. But then you got characteristics. That's what he say. So now let's look at Charleston Reich's characteristics. A man that admitted, talk about him or me when we talk about our past, but when he talk <laughs> about his past, he talk about raping a woman. But y'all accept that. I don't. So I don't talk about it. We're going to be about it. Uh, we also know Charleston White was bragging about going to Memphis to a school where he all of a sudden admitted, oh, I ain't going to mention the school. But that didn't get past my ear. I want to know why he didn't, and it's a reason why, because he wouldn't have been allowed there. So I'm putting everybody on notice. If he's around a child where he's anywhere involved, I'm gonna hold you responsible if something happened to that child. Now tomorrow we're gonna have a show where Charleston uh, threatened and was restrained from jumping on a 16 year old. That's coming out tomorrow. And since he liked to tell if we wanted to, that's charges of assault. And I don't think he's ready, but I ain't gonna punish him like that. Maybe, maybe not, that's <laughs> up to them. But at the end of the day, it ain't about Charleston, right? It's a moral issue here. Mm -hmm. He got a man that has been uh, uh, on the internet out his own mouth again, showing his penis. My mom want to be a porn star. Uh, I show my penis. We got that. He called a child a faggot. You know about it. 
Well, you, when you say I know about it, here, here, here's the spiel. You know, I heard what had happened. Okay, I well, wasn't that's there. That's what I bet you but know. I heard about it. But yeah. but at the end of the day, I, I wasn't there, so I can't no, just no, let put me my show you about on. it. But, but I got to say this. When uh, Charleston, because uh, he it's been kids over here that he had uh, brought over here, as I told you before, and when they got out of juvenile, and these was teenagers. But at any rate, and I wouldn't pick the teenager up because I had went spoke at the juvenile to these kids. So I definitely don't, I, I don't regret doing it. But I uh. can say this, um, and I will say this, when when he talked about raping a white girl, he always clarified the fact that he was a young kid. Wait, hold, hold on, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, on. I ain't I no say hold that. on it, he hold was a young on. kid. Ain't nothing you can say after that. He was a that. young kid. I wouldn't give a damn if you said you if, was to hold it, bro. Hold on, bro. Hold your horses. So if he's young, no, no, it don't no, matter. No, no. He's saying they ran a train on the white girls. I've heard you him say You know how many people I ever heard said they raped somebody in my goddamn life? And I've been around rapists from the Hillside Strangler to the USC rapists. Nah, motherfucker. Let me let me let me help you out. Go ahead. Let me help you out. No, that let ain't throw, no. Let, let, let me throw my right a life rap. I'm right just quick. I'm just having the conversation. Let me, no, 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 let me throw my life no, rap no, real quick. You could sure. watch this on. Um, it's it's in it's in people like our DNA. Institution prison. When you done been to prison, you don't even have to go to prison. To be a real, to be on, I know where he at, you know, when he talk like that. You can feel it come out of him, the energy come out of him. In prison, you better not even smell like you didn't rape somebody. That don't go down. Mm -hmm. You hear me? You better not, shit. <laughs> Your name better not, not even come up on it. it. Not Your name better not even come up on it. You can't take that back. Can't take it back, bro. That's like I heard you fucked a punk. You can't get that back. You did that. Hey, that's that, something that's going to stick. But when you say things like that and you play with the children, I got an injury to a child on my on my record for sure whooping did. a sixteen, for fighting a sixteen when I was seventeen. <laughs> the seventeen was was big in them, <laughs> and I was smaller than Charleston. You hear me? Yeah, but um, just cause the big man had a black eye, and he was sixteen and I was seventeen. I got charged in as an adult. One thing you can't play with is rape. We don't play that. That's unacceptable, bro. It, it, Particularly it, I mean, when no matter what's this, being around don't, children. Don't do what's oh, yeah. this. Okay, well, I, I, I don't, see what you can be around don't, 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 You can't play that. You can't, play you can't that. be you around can't children. Can't do that, yeah. man. Yeah. That's I, I, the bottom I, I, line. I, I fuck with Charleston, but he that. know. But watch this. I'm going to tell you something about Charleston. He'll tell you himself. Had I have said something like that, he'd have, he'd have ran to the moon with it. Oh, yeah. You can't do that. Fast. You know, you don't, that's one thing, you know, mentally that you can't take out a real one when you say it. So I'm I'm not I'm not I'm I'm, I'm so, not So because he said that he raped hard, that's hard. pretty much Ooh. everything else is out the door. Oh, you can't nah. do that. You can't do that, bro. That's yeah. a lot, E. Saying you actually took some like that from somebody. <laughs> you can't, can't do that. You can't do that, bro. That's a lot. And if you do do it and be around somebody you cuz he's not a register but if yeah, you would have been convicted of that, you wouldn't have been allowed. I got a partner doing 100 years right now for not registering mm -hmm. for that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. But okay. at the end of the day, it ain't nothing personal. You cannot, if I work with youths, he would not pass the test to be around youths. Just on his words and its mission. So I'm not accusing him nothing. Right. I'm just going by what he say. It ain't about yeah. Charleston White. Mm -hmm. This is you just it. where you look at the issue. A man doing this, a man admit that, would you let him around your child? Mayhem. I got Mayhem on. I, I want to I wanna hear from Mayhem now because he's been listening to the conversation. And he's real. Uh, he, he's a real intelligent brother when it comes down. He he actually understand prison talk. And brother Mayhem. He did 17 years in prison. Well, yeah. uh, right there behind. Boy, right behind. So, so Mayhem, uh, when it comes down to these, uh, the, 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 what's, what's the conversation like, what, what, do you, what, what input could you give me? Oh, man. <clears throat> on what topic, man? Oh, oh, oh. First of all, first of all, shout out to, uh, to, to Bev and OG Percy and all that for, for, for you know, being here. And like I say, having the desire to, to like I say, reach and understand. Understand and beat everything. And also your legacy, man. You know what I'm saying? Your legacy is, is solid, man. But, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Charleston White, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know, he is definitely promoting my book. You know what I'm saying? I had a great interview with him. You know what I'm saying? But like I say, one thing that I tell people, 
One thing about Charleston White that, that I try to understand, I try to understand people, man. And, and and he's difficult to understand, man. But I do know that he got a true desire to keep young people out of prison. And with that, I, I salute that brother, brother and, I, and I try to support that way and when he's on that mission hey man that's my boy i got him you know what i'm saying but when he's doing what he got to do to 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 get the views man i ain't i ain't with all that that's not how i was raised i was raised by some real cripping i was raised by a crip environment in texas from real crips and like i say when i hear people talking about cripping you know uh man we got successful crips in dallas you know, people talk about Crips, and I, I, I hear about all this, and I hear all these sad stories, and this is, you know, Crip man gets shot, and, and they was robbing, and they was bad, and it's all bad. You know, nobody talks about the drop tops, and, and, and nobody talks about it, but we don't need to glorify that. But what I'm saying is, back in my day when I grew up, man, it was, hey, man, it was dangerous to say you was a Crip. But the mayhem. Let me ask you this. I mean to cut you off, but you, you, Charleston uh, spoke on with, with when he was on with uh, with Atula Marvin and, and Melvin uh, about the characters of a, of the man and what he, you know, tries to to assassinate that character. So um, I had a my my discrepancy was with with that was so Melvin uh, escorted Charleston to Nipsey's funeral. You dig what I'm saying? So in that character. You know, you don't you don't you don't get to know Aramis unless you meet Nipsey first, whether it's in person or whether it's you know what I'm saying through the internet or through the music. So in order for you to feel like Aramis is a good person, you got to bump into Nipsey first. You dig what I'm saying? And his mama know Aramis, his family, you don't know that to say that this is a you know, fuck Nipsey, excuse my French, but I'm with Aramis. That's cool, but if Nipsey was out here destroying and, and hurting, then you are tied to your opinion. That man was out here building a lot of a lot of different kind of ways. You dig what I'm saying? So to try to take that from him just because his name is Nipsey Hustle and he's a crip and you into it with the gang members, I didn't and I listened to a lot of people. I watched Percy, I watched Melvin, I watched Charleston, I'm studying all of this. So as a student, I had to call BS on that because that's not proper. You can't no. say Nipsey fuck the character because he's a crip. He's a successful crip, like you were saying, Brother Mayhem. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't mean to cut you out, but I had to, when you, when you spoke, and I had to get that off real quick. So, uh, what, do you, what do you feel about that, Mayhem? First of all, I don't want, I, see, people are very comfortable su using a lot of words, right? And, and I'm, not, I'm not here to talk about Charleston White or, 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 or Crips, but, but remember, my underlying token is I'm not even here to sell these books. You know what I'm saying? I'm a youth mentor, right? And my job is I'm here to really teach young men how to be young men, right? And so when it comes down to it, my overall objective is to teach a young man how to be responsible. And that is to, and that's how to, and that's, that, what that means is how to be responsible, be responsible with what he's doing, but also how to maintain his character. Right. So now when I'm saying and when I say maintain character, we don't need to be making up definitions and and just putting this all, you know, you, you know, and taking the word character out of context. Right. The word character means the way other people perceive you. Right. Character is important because we have to maintain character. That's why I said I grew up around crip, a cripping character. Right. And that was dangerous for me. But it also saved me. And, but it was also uh, somebody that was out there that was, available, uh, that was available to teach me and give me the game. Except his game was that. You know, that character was that. And that character has character flaws. But it is what it is. But in order us for us to correct it, we first must acknowledge that we have these flaws. We cannot fix something that we don't have. Right? So when we sit here and we sit here and we try to play mind games and say Aramis and Nipsey Hutt, man, that's the same person. That's the same person. So, and my thing is this. So, the most important thing, one of the most important things, I ain't say the most important thing, but one of the most important things that I, I could teach any man is respect. You know what the most important thing about respect is? Mm -hmm. Don't disrespect. Disrespect. The most important thing about respect is disrespect. Why do I say that? As penitentiary. We penitentiary men, right? And so what we learned real quick, it doesn't matter if you respect me or not. You don't got to respect me. You ain't got to acknowledge me at all. Just as long as you just don't disrespect me. That's where a problem comes a lie in it. Right? A lot of people are very comfortable disrespecting, saying disrespectful things in this era. In our era, that is deadly. People die behind disrespect. 
But well, but today, people are comfortable because we come in an age of technology. So I come up from an old school. I come up. I, I came up in the in the eighties and nineties in Crippen, and, and and it's a totally different. I did seventeen calendar years behind living a, a, a real 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 life, bro. And, and what I noticed difference between when I got out of prison to when I went into prison, they got a thing now nowadays in Dallas called high crime areas. And what that means, you cannot congregate like we used to do back in the neighborhood, back in the day when I was out. When I was 13, 14, we used to go outside and it was 50 to maybe 80 niggas outside, bro. Everybody gang banging. You can't do that no more. You can't even you 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 get ten people outside the police showing up saying you cannot be out here. This is high crime. They would take you to jail. But back in my days, that's why gang banging was effective. But our gang banging wasn't a bunch of out of control imbeciles. Our gang banging was some very serious, very we had championship gang bang people around us. Shout out to my boy Doc and Scott Blue and all the people who raised me. But man, y'all taught us how to not only it didn't teach us how to just put in work. They taught us about respect people's mothers. Don't talk about somebody's sisters. Maintain. They taught you, boy. You learned what good person was by you know it was it was dangerous to be a crip and also playing with the word crip. I hear people now, yeah, man, yeah, man, boy, my boy, say man, say you a crip and you don't be a crip back in the day. That, that was one of the first missions that I had. Back in my day when I was young and got to start getting into the gang banging, I was too young. They wouldn't even let me be a Crip. I had to join a little gang up underneath some Crips called BGP, Baby Gangster, uh, uh, Baby Gangster Posse. When, and after a couple of years, maybe we can graduate into a Crip, which is what I ended up doing. But the first thing that I did as a Baby Gangster Posse, the little gang, is we went and specifically looked for people who were pretending to be Crips. The first, I remember we were looking for some people called themselves North Dallas Crips. We said, ain't no such thing as North Dallas Crips, bro. If you ain't no Rolling 30 Schoolyard Crip, Five Deuce Hoover, you don't have a real set from California, you better not be caught talking about you a real crip that was very dangerous man hey thank you thank you mayhem um that definitely was a good explanation um so did you get everything out of that you were trying to get out i wanted to hear what brother melvin had to say lastly about the character yes sir okay uh, uh well as you know uh uh charleston white went to uh nipsey hustle uh funeral through me mm -hmm. uh in fact uh he got the, when Nipsey, he was over there, uh, when me, Barefoot, Pookie, and Babalu were talking right after Nipsey uh, had got slain. So he got to go there. We went through the VIP. He got to be around Snoop, Game, Farrakhan, Raymond Washington, daughter, because we broke up. So uh, I was up front, up there with Sam, and uh, when the daughters and the family came out, uh, we was right there at the front. I'm standing next to Game. And Charleston had went with uh, uh, Ray Sean of Washington and they little side of the crew, Pete Winbush and them, I think. And uh, he got the experience, all that. He got them where, in fact, uh, they took a liking to him, left him over there. Everybody embraced Charleston White. So, but more importantly, when it came to Nipsey Hussle or anybody that he talked to, nobody he basically know personally, whether it's Air Miss yeah. or Nipsey Hussle, so he nailed down one of them. I mm -hmm. know either or. Yeah. So when it come to a lot of guys, whether it's celebrity, a uh, friend, family, or foe, I usually have a personal relationship where I know maybe their grandmama, uh, their uncle, their sister, or brother. So I know quite a few people mm -hmm. that are related to Nipsey Hussle. I had love for him. And when you're in these streets, these people know Nipsey Hussle. Yeah. Not everyone's because to them, they want in the same person. But they know him from an intimate uh, uh, perspective. So at the end of the day, not just him, it's a lot of guys that are icons that are, you got Slim 400. Uh, a lot of things back door, I'm privileged. I can talk to WAC 100 when I yeah. get ready to. I can talk to Charleston White when I get ready to. I can talk to uh, Reggie Wright. Uh, I told him Marvin, and pretty much anybody, Kevin Gates, any of them uh, uh, on the internet. So I'm behind the scene a lot. But it goes back to at the end of the day, you know, when we're really trying to give back to the community, I'm not gonna hate on uh, Charleston White. I'm gonna leave that because I don't have 
uh, I know him personally. Good man. So I know he's done things for me and yeah. done it. So I'm not going to sit. We all have a past. That's what everybody that's on uh, 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 social media. Sometimes uh, it's just best to let things go and move forward because at the end of the day, our one common goal is unity in the community. And uh, at the end of the day, we might take different roads and paths, but we end up on the one common ground. So yeah. at the end of the day, we all marching towards yes, the sir. same thing. And we just have to give these youth something to march to. All of us that do. Part. No, 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 no that, that's the most march. important yeah, part. And I, I and I can say that about when I've seen the things that Charleston has done, not just here uh, just recently with what everybody talking about, but being like with the kids and, yeah, and basically uh, putting shoes on the kids, feeding the kids food. That's what we, we looked at those things too. So yeah, but everybody do have a pass. Y'all, yeah. you guys are absolutely right. Pe but, and people have to be held accountable for what they, the way they carry themselves when they're dealing with a certain group of people. And when you so have people when, watching you, you got I get a, a it. This social media yeah. is, is, is something different, you know, uh, to say things just for, uh, sound views likes, or whatever. Yeah. Sound bites it, it, and likes. Exactly. <laughs> that ain't hard it, to it, explain, it, 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 it changes you. The message it, it, get distorted, E, when, it, when you when you mix a lot of, you know what I'm saying, real, because he's absolutely uh, intelligent. You feel for me? For sure. It, the, the, some of the immature things he might say for the for the for the clicks and the likes or take away his message when somebody is really watching you. They see the bull crap and they waiting for you to come with the message. So, you know what I'm saying? You got different audiences watching it. So I just mixing that crowd up, man, it's just not it's it's uh it's not proper style to, to do that often as he as he does. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I definitely understand and, and my thing is from my perspective, you meet people where they're at, okay? Um <clears throat> everybody in here. You're trying to help everybody, right? It ain't something to where you just counsel, you know, because we quick to counsel culture, whoever. But there's there there's change and evolution in everybody if they'll accept it. For sure. You know, so I, I don't leave a person in one spot. That's one thing I don't do. And even if I see you, if I see you're hurting, I'm going to try to figure out a way to help you. You know, um, and try to figure out a way for you to see the goodness in me so that you can change. Because people can change by looking at what you do. And, exactly. and, and they can and they become better people. So that's the way I approach a lot of situations. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I definitely understand that people are definitely uh, on these platforms, on these blogs, on these different Instagram, Facebook, TikToks, Twitters, <laughs> tags, trying to get <laughs> views. These niggas is, is really like a, 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 a lady of the night. You know what I'm with saying? A, like everything, if I could just turn it on and, and everybody will applaud me, then I can be pretty much seen and known and everybody can see my value. But there's something about respect, as you guys did say, that holds way more weight, really, in real life. In real life. If I see you in real life and, hmm. and me and you around each other, you're going to have the respect for me because you're not going to do that with me in front of you. As men... Well, as, as as people that's been in prison where you ain't have no gun or as people in this room right now uh when you deal with different people uh it's a certain way a person act when they're in the room with you versus not being i just say it like that yeah most definitely call them cell warriors <laughs> you know what a cell warrior is no explain <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a man in another cell that can't get to you okay Lock him down, you, you you bitches, hoes, motherfucker, fuck your mama, your daddy, bitch, suck my dick, your sister dick, your brother, uh, it's you everything, fuck you, nigga. And he did small. In other words, you're saying shit where you can't get to you. <laughs> See, when you, get, when you can sit and be and Sell. sit isolated and talk uh, <clears throat> on your own, you're going to always be correct. Hmm. That's why we do fact checks. Can you uh, tell them what happened when the doors roll? Uh, 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 let the gates be the bell. You got damn right. <laughs> Talk to me. Talk to me. That's I know. I, I let, let the gates be the gates bell. Let the gates be the bell when that cell <laughs> ding, ding. Come on, uh, Two men enter, one man leave. That's how that shit go. That's the thunder yeah. dome. Two men enter, one man leave. Cell warriors. Wow. So mm. a lot of times, you know, but back at the end of the day, let's go. Uh, you know, uh, I ain't really focusing on no Charleston White. I'm That's focusing right. on creating a platform. I have a, a program uh, where we're going to be uh, educating uh, 
uh, effective black parenting training with these uh, four uh, Christians ladies where, uh, in fact, I got a Zoom meeting tonight at 8 o'clock, so we're going to start that at 60-day pilot. Uh, we have a documentary coming out, uh, Senseless Gun Violence, uh, World mm -hmm. Epidemic with Ice-T, uh, Trey D. narrating Freeway Rick, uh, uh, got Credible Messenger. So it's a lot of things going on. Uh, to where I just like to start getting in a little bit about what we also in trying to do as, as far as what Texas does to help the community. These are yeah, mm -hmm. messengers that, that was as okay. opposed to just yapping at the mouth yeah, about absolutely. something that's irrelevant. Correct. I, I, and that was the whole game for Boss Talk. It really is. We yes. we want to bring people together in all walks of life. You know what I mean? Trying to figure out ways to bridge gaps, man. Trying to figure out ways to build bridges instead of walls between different individuals, especially for all of us, man, people that look like each other. You know, it's, it's very uncommon for people to come together in any sort of fashion unless they're up to something that ain't worth nothing to even talk about. So at the end of the day, to have you brothers to come on, on Boss Talk 101 just to sit down and have a round table, that, that's, 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 hey, man, that's epic for me. You know what I mean? So I appreciate you guys for coming. I'm going to let Mayhem come because we're going to talk a little bit about the books. I know Melvin and Bob wrote all kind of books about it. So let's let's get yeah. into it, man. So what, what uh, when you, because you, you basically, Mayhem, uh, been around me for a while now. So, right. you, you, you know, and, and I appreciate you for coming on the panel today. Um, just um, a little bit about, like, like, when you think about California, being that you was born in, in California, and then being in Texas, but still having California ties. Um, what do you think about when you look at the way that the, you know, the two cities, uh, you know, kind of springboard off each other, actually? I mean, Dallas, uh, I personally feel Dallas, Texas is, is L.A. You know, we, we have always loved California. I mean, so at Fort Worth, we have been, we have been California uh, – since the 80s, since Ron C. came out here. Ron C. came out from, he was from Oakland, then he moved from L.A., then he moved to Dallas. He came out trendsetters. It ain't, and then, you know, and then, like I say, game banging came, hit Dallas in the late 80s. And Fort Worth was game banging harder than, harder than Dallas. You know, and, and like I say, it was just, we had a lot of love and admiration for California, for just the Snoop Dogs and just, you know, I guess Dallas had like a little pimp, we was like pimping and gangsters back, back back in those days. So when Snoop Dogg came and then I guess we had that I, I like I say, Ron C was a big factor back in the as I'm looking at it now, eighty nine, ninety, Ron C put it down. Yeah, yeah, and I he, had I had Nino Cappuccino on uh, no not Nino Cappuccino. I had him on here, but I had uh Bobo. I had Bobo on here and he talked about Ron C and Snake. That's what it was. Hmm. He, he talked about those and two Nemesis. guys. And I remember, I remember being in Fresno, California, and hearing "Munchies for Your Bass." I remember walking in Fresno, California, hearing Dallas music "Munchies for Your Bass," which is DJ Sneak in Fresno in '86, '87. So Dallas music, I, and it's crazy that I would end up in Dallas listening to California music because I'm from California. But I grew up in Albuquerque, Colorado, Dallas. Uh, Louisiana and Memphis. So I grew up, but I've always had a connection to California. My oldest siblings grew up in California. All my family gang banged. All my family was crip. That's why when I went in the, when I went to prison, I was really crip. I, grew, I really grew up a crip, but when I went to prison, I wrote my oldest brother. I got 17 calendar years in prison. My oldest brother got 20 for murder. He a crip. I wrote him, I was all excited to write him. Yeah, bro, yeah, cuz, cuz. And I was writing my brother. My brother wrote me back from California prison. And he said, nigga, if you don't stop <laughs> gang banging, if you ever write me this, <laughs> nigga. And he told me, he did, y'all ain't no real crips. Y'all, and, and my this my brother. He already had about 17 did, did. I'm just entering prison. But he told me then, don't gang bang. Y'all cripping ain't cripping. Wow. Y'all disrespecting us up here. We do not respect what you're doing down there. If you come down to Texas and you tell us you're a crip, they're going to kill you. Now, Stop saying that. 
It depends, on, it depends on who you is, how yeah. you carry yourself. It don't matter who you are. If you don't no, have, if I, don't, you, I don't believe it. No, listen, I, feel I don't you, believe it. No, I'm, I, it's not. I don't believe whether, it. It's not whether you believe it or not. This is what my, your brother knew who you was. No, this is my brother. This my brother. He know. He yeah, loved me. I just said that he know he who know, you was. He's telling and, me. And some people know that. Hey, nigga, you ain't been put on no work we're saying. No, no, nigga, no. Nigga, you ain't no crib, nigga. They no, gonna tell you no, that. No, no. See, my thing is that when we say you can look at a crib and tell a crib. No, nah, but I'm talking about crib. We talking about. Being initiated, okay, okay. we talking about real crip. We ain't talking about no. I'm from the neighborhood. Nah, we don't know what kind of crip that is. We talking about real cripping in Dallas. See, when you got crip niggas in Dallas, you got niggas who really was initiated. When I tell you I was cripping in Dallas, we was initiated. You had to go through some real stuff. You just couldn't. I think I'm gonna be a crip today. No, <laughs> nigga, you was gonna. You was gonna. It was that was a problem. You couldn't walk outside and say you was a crip and not so be a real crip. So how could, how could now, your listen, brother did break down what your brother was saying and how you did, feel about it? And he, you didn't stop cripping then either. I immediately stopped cripping because okay. I was in the county going to Prison. TDC. Okay. So this he told me at a pinnacle point. I was 18 years old. I wasn't no average crip dude. I wasn't no, I wasn't no regular crip. I was a big crip. I was a big, I was sold drugs, so I wasn't no, I wasn't no regular dude. I was, I ran people in the street. I was embraced by a crip, and I wasn't no, they, when I had to gang bang, no, I didn't have to, I didn't have to gang bang. I love gang bang. You feel me? It wasn't a, it wasn't a, damn, I guess I got to do this. It, I couldn't wait to get up and go outside and hang out with my brothers. I mean, this was what, it, this was my life. So, so did, when he told me about, listen, bro, this cripping, has did to you what it did to me. You, I got murdered. You you 18 years old, you got aggravated robbery and attempted murder. Cripping, <laughs> cripping is, is, is for us in Y'all California. ain't got nothing to do with no cripping. No, but listen, <laughs> see, I, <laughs> I'm trying to I understand. Don't know, I don't know what your cripping was about. It wasn't about no killing and robbing. Well, uh, cri cripping is not about killing and robbing. Cripping is about standing on principles. And sometimes when you stand on principles, you gotta hurt people. What's a I big crib? What you mean a big crib? You said you was a big crib. A big crib is What's somebody. What's your set? A schoolyard 30. I heard that. I heard that. What That's you talking about? What? Are you questioning? Are you, you? I got to. Are I you got questioning to. me? Because I don't hear cripping. I don't hear cripping. No, I'm not. I have I'm a community resolution no, in progress. No, 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 no. I'm no longer crip. I've not, not gang banged yeah, since I was me. 18 years old. I say I'm community revolution you, in progress. We grown men. That's what did you listen, what I said? We grown men. I'm community grown. Community revolution in progress. I'm uh, okay. I'm grown. So I stopped gang banging 18. I'm 44. Yeah. I get it. I get I don't it. Gang bang so no I see. More. I see where this guy community. Is at. Yeah. Revol Do you know what well, that I, means? I, I say it. I didn't say nothing about no mayhem. I say say what community. Community revelation. See there. That's revolution. not a crib. That's not no crib. It's so many. That first nigga not no crib, homie. That nigga not no crib, homie. That nigga listen. not no crib. He, you not. Yeah, he. he I'm not a when crib. He was 18. I'm not a crib. He ain't I'm never a been one. Okay, well, fine. I mean, it's not a debatable issue. It sure not, but he did, he did a lot of talking about cripping. No, Don't no, do no, that. No. That's what's happening no, now. See, it's a lot on. of people saying they did stay that. And they, see, I get around a big nigga like him, and a little young nigga believe him. You hear what I just said? Okay. I'm not trying to get and, nobody to be no crip. I hope you're not. Okay. That's good. I'm glad you're not. That's, not. that's the point, but but you just talked. I grew up cripping. But you talked. You said I grew that. Up a crip, I grew up cripping when I, I'm 44. How old are you? I'm 52, homie. Oh, I'm 44. I'm 52. So, so, I'm so standing, hold on. Let me, let me ask you. I don't care about hold you hold being hold a crip or what you was. Hold up. 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 It's not debatable. Hold up. Hold up. We ain't got too much time. It don't matter. I'm trying to make my dollar. Everybody want to be king shit. <laughs> no, no I don't. Out. I don't want to turn you down, homie. Yeah, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, but I want to get, I wanna get back to what Melvin was talking. I want to get back to show to, you to why. To the progress. Why. This is what happens to the a, when you're having a dialogue. Let's go, Daddy. That's why I was gonna wait till you through, but it's good yeah. that you asked the age different. So your era of cripping, you're eight years older than him. So when you come into the game at that, yours might not be the same as his. You right. So both of y'all can be right. And you Fort Worth. I'm from Dallas. So yeah. at the Murder, end I'm from of Murder the day, Murder Murder Murder. right, right. But at the end of the day, two different worlds. It's two I different worlds. But once again, sick. and I know everybody that you know. I guarantee you, you know about twenty people that can tell you they love me. That you know, that I love you. you. I love you, I'm but I don't know you. But, I don't, but you don't know nothing. You wouldn't know half the people. Now we talk about. Let's keep it going, man. Right, let's, let's go. There we go. All right, let's go. So on to the next. Here's the deal. Here's here's the deal. When you look at the way neighborhood, this is this was a perfect example of what 
what I see when I look at different people who are in different neighborhoods, who are doing different things, who are on different age brackets, who are on different levels. This is just something that 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 this is something that happens, bro. A conversation between men that's on different walks of life. And that's why I say I meet people where they at, really, to be honest with you. Because at the end of the day, I am a man that been through a lot of stuff. But I know already that, that what I've been through can can calm the room down and say, hey, hey, man, I did this and I did that. But at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, we all are always moving, bro. Evolution is something. You're not the same dude that you was when you was a young man. No, sir. No, you, sir. You, when you was young and you was doing all the street running, you ain't the same dude that was on Mayhem over there by Spring Valley doing all the stuff that you was doing. We are at an age now where we got young kids that's looking at us for an example of which way to go through these microphones. But listen, this hold is, on, through these microphones. But what he's saying is, again, I like what he's saying. We need people who are qualified. I, I put in work behind Crippers, so... I'm qualified, but he's like, I need to know because we got too many people who talking about this who ain't did nothing. But now he right, but, I agree but, with so you. That's why, so that's why he like, man, I need to know because I'm the same way. But I already know his backstory, so I ain't got to question him. I, I watch him. I don't know you, but I guarantee you, I just I, as a real as where I come from, we don't. I ain't trying to be no no yeah. YouTube shot. I'm not that like I, said, I don't do this. Bro. I'm, but but I guarantee you, the more you know about me, you are gonna be man. This is this is this no, is what it is. So hold up, but hold, let me say this here too. What what he did, what he just did right now, is what I talked about. We willfully cripping is not something that's forced. It's going to be something we want to do. We love this. This is not a game to us. This isn't something that you pretend to do. Cripping is an environment, right? And so when I t when I tell people I grew up in a crip environment, it means everybody who grew me, well, pardon me, they I, when I was started cripping, I was twelve and thirteen, which is the normal age of somebody who's supposed to be game banging. You shouldn't be game banging when you're 25, 26. It should start when you're young. But the people when I came outside, they were already game banging. They were telling me off the so they told me you can't even be a crib. You got to go, you got to get tough first. You got to learn what's up. So I couldn't just didn't run off and join no crib. Nah, I knew I had to respect them first. I had to watch them. I had to learn. And then as I got older, then I was able to walk the line and really get initiated to this real because where I was growing up, this cripping was real cripping. But as I grew up, I grew out of that. I grew out of that. And as I and then as I got around other cribs, they told me, look, bro, you got to get yourself right because now look where you at. You are and it, it, and me going to prison really had nothing to do with cripping. Mm. But what I did do, what I did know is that no matter where I was at, once you're introduced to that shit, it's like hard to let it go. It's hard to let cripping go. It's hard and, and, and like I said, it was but, hard but, to but, and, but let me say this. A lot of times it's hard because of the lives that's lost during the process of being a crip too. No, a lot that's, of times you, this is the main reason why yeah, it's hard yeah. to let it go. Because you're still stuck in that environment. You're still stuck in the environment. Damn, that definitely it. But lives being lost definitely holds a, a, a toll on you. Well, you know, when you really joined up and signed up for this shit, lives being lost to you means something, but when you sign up for this shit here. That's the only way you really come in this game, pulling that trigger wow. or getting in some trouble. That, you couldn't go back uh, and come into this game dressing up with braided hair and saggy pants and quit walking and uh, doing <laughs> shit and just claiming. Mm -hmm. And you ain't got no, you got more graduation pictures than arrest records. <laughs> yeah, See, okay. this shit is backwards. Uh, uh, so and, and I like hate to say that, but no, no, no. Let me let me finish because I want to talk to no, OG person. It's true. We That's all got we all got homeboys got murder cases. All of my homeboys got twenty five. Yeah, all, all, all of us, but not one, two of them. Everybody, everybody. Oh, man, when you around them. When when I look at uh, OG Percy and I like I said, I looked at that documentary and all the people that that's in those boxes that you were talking about, different people who died for different causes and things that pretty much uh, mm -hmm. caused you to be there making these speeches. Man, um, does that have an effect on you in the way you live your life. I'll put it like that. The only way, the only thing that has effect on me the way I live my life, shout out to Tookie, man. Okay. That's, that's, that's the effect on how I live my life in Cribbing. When I found out what it was really about, when I found out what it was really about, the black redemption part, mm -hmm. the blue rage, you, you can have that. I went through that. I done been through the blue rage. When I found out I am part of that book, as far as my life story goes, and, and to get to the end of the book and find out it is a pot of gold at the rainbow, all you got to do is try to keep watching, keep going for it. Um, Tookie taught me that. He taught me just through that book, Bob. I call it the, the Crip Bob. Uh, uh, you can call it what you want to, but um, when I read it for the first time in prison, I read it. And that, and that Bible, that book, you know, I couldn't read. I'm not a reader. I told you I'm not good on reading. 
But when I got in there, it took you, but it was just something I better learn. I'm going to learn this book. I learned about Buddha. I learned about all. I read that book. Hell, I couldn't even read, but I'm going to read this one. The first book I ever read to the end. Wow. Mm -hmm. The first book I ever read all the way to the end. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But but the but thing I learned. The thing was, I learned what it meant. I learned what it meant. I got crip wrote all over me. My back, my head, my my behind my face. It's all over me. I said four. I words. can't get it off. Yeah. But the thing I learned was what it meant. When you get the meaning, the black rage part. When you get the, I wouldn't I wouldn't spend a minute talking about trying to convince you what I know about cripping. I, I I cut for you. You good man. But 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 wasting ten minutes we're talking about kind of you can't convince me or nobody else. You might convince somebody else. I believe what you said it the first time. The real nigga gonna say it once, not twice. You hear me? But anyway, you're a good man. It took you one at the end in a good way. He didn't get the message out. People didn't get the memo. They wouldn't let the youngsters get the memo. They wouldn't let the black men get the memo. They wouldn't let them pass it out to the youngsters. Now, they, Melvin, they killed him. Melvin being a friend of Tookie. Right. And 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 being that you guys started, you know, off young together, or you was a little older than you, but you started off understanding and walking and dealing with him. Um, to be done seen this guy who's affected way in Texas, mm. and all like I said, this didn't, didn't just start. It ain't just a Texas thing either. It's each state. It, it, you can go to Louisiana and find it. You can go to Mississippi <laughs> and find it. You can go to New Orleans and find it. Did you ever think that it would be that? that uh, effective far as pretty much pulling people into that situation you when you guys started the, when you, when this yeah, thing first I started off we went through this early and I'm gonna get the same answer again. I want to hear it because I just I didn't heard all of these guys no we didn't think uh, nothing about this we didn't uh, we hadn't even had sex with our socks off at that time <laughs> let alone to be thinking about uh, something like this uh, going on you know it was Three things going on, uh, late 70s, late 60s, early 70s, Soul Train, Game Banging, and Pop Locking. Mm, let's go. Uh, and all those three things are staples uh, uh, day across America mm -hmm. from back then. But I, it's not nothing really to be proud of uh, about this life. Uh, and uh, talk. Uh, that's real talk, because at the end of the day, uh, <laughs> Uh, you guilt by association. Uh, you think you uh, the camaraderie when you're growing up, uh, going back and forth to jail. Uh, when you don't think your ass will wear out before that first <laughs> wheel that hold you and silence your voice. But then as you get older, you see the look in your mother's eyes. Mm. You see your family members. Uh, to where you don't see the wrinkles uh, and you think about all the time you could have been with your mother instead of running around niggas. Hmm. Uh, and you know, hmm. you can't paint a, a picture with a canvas with one stroke. So I've been privileged and blessed to see five generations because every 10 years shit changes in Let's this go. game. So I know where Texas is at in its 30 year, 40 year history. I know where New Jersey, I can know about the, uh, from previous experience mm -hmm. uh, when it come to that. So at the end of the day, man, uh, uh, I don't put no titles on nothing. Uh, as far as uh, people, I try to be an un unbiased urban analyst when I look at any situation and I always try to be fair. But I know this is a time now where we want to make these youths uh, uh, taxpayers as opposed to tax burdens. And uh, you know this crip and blood, we're not a gang, we're a brand now. Mm, and we yeah. have to start letting uh, 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 the entertainment world, uh, Nike, that make the hats the color of whatever set you from, you hear me? when you're uh, uh, like the Texas Rangers hats. <laughs> That's Come one on. of the biggest hats yeah. selling in all America <laughs> because it represents the gangster crips. So you're talking about global. And so we have to look at how they exploiting us to where uh, we need to address them like when Jesse Jackson used to go back door for Coca-Cola and discrimination. And uh, 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 we need to have people such as us or people that are rooted uh, in this community that have a vested interest in the community where we speak up to help uh, eradicate uh, some of these adverse conditions that exist. And all that come with us with being unity in the community. If we can't get that, we segregating ourselves.
We've had Martin Luther King die, get hmm. sprayed. We don't went from water holes to choke holes, wow. but nothing's changed. But we can have to us that some people have to stand up and do every other race get along together. We don't. We try because we isolate ourselves to where it's the crab over the bucket. Everybody trying to overstep <laughs> when it's no big use and no eyes and this shit. It ain't hard to do. Uh, thank hey. you. Um, so mayhem. When you uh, you you say you was not uh, you, at eighteen, you you put the cripping down. How did you do time uh, uh, separating yourself from the different groups of people? That one day at a time. No, I, I, I didn't hear that. <laughs> no, when I got, no, when I got in the prison, in. when I got in the prison, prison had a lot of niggas who was claiming to be crips. Like he was saying, I ain't, I ain't locked seat with nobody. I don't know who you <laughs> is. Yeah, who is you? Like you say, who is you? I don't know you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you a crip, but you ain't did no work like me. I don't know you like that. You ain't yeah. did no drive-bys. You ain't robbed nobody. You ain't did nothing to me. So don't try to come up here and lock seats with me talking about your set. I was locked in with people from Cleburne and Killeen, Texas. and <laughs> Johnson yeah, they was, County. They was made all type of Black Panther gangster crip. One dude told me you were Black Panther gangster crip. I mean, I was just so... The more I got in prison and got around, because everybody in prison was is not real. Everybody And I went to prison back in the night. See, this is like he was telling me, it's a new prison now. I went to prison, and prison taught me one thing. See, and another thing that I want to talk about too, I didn't gang bang in prison. I never had the gang bang. That's what, that's what I was asking about. I, I was a man before anything else, and I was in numerous race rides, and I'm glad that I was in race rides, like he was talking about, because one thing about, see, and my, I came from in, back in the 90s when prison was violent. When I walked into the TDC, they said, you're going to fuck, fight, or bust a 60. The law told you that. Not no inmate. The officer told you that. Then they said, get into the day room. I was 18. I was a, a, a powder pink nigga walking in there. Well, they just cut my hair off. They, I looked friendly than the mud. And, you know, I told you people got a line, and I had to introduce myself immediately and let them know this is who I am. And that's why people like, okay, well, that's why I didn't have to crib. When I, you know, when you go in there fighting, everybody embraces you. Everybody embraces it. You go in there punching nigga in the face for disrespecting you, the nigga like, I like that nigga. And I'm from the city. I'm from the city. Everybody knew me. I came in with a reputation. I came in, the, everywhere I went, I already knew people on every unit I went on, I knew somebody from the street. And they were like, nigga, you ain't crippin'? I was like, I ain't crippin'. They were like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? Nobody questioned it. I mean, people kind of liked it. Like he would under. If I went around him, person, I said, "Hey, person, what's up?" And you like, man, I, I gang bang with. And you and I told person, I said, "Yeah, Brian, I'm doing my time. I ain't gang banging." He gonna say, "I understand." You a lie. No, I'm just saying. No, no the unit I'm listen, on. The no, unit no. I'm on. Listen, you, was, you listen. was on Ferguson. You was on, on, on I was on Cofield. So I don't know. You, you on know, Cofield? I was on Cofield. Well, I was Beto, on Rascal unit. Terrible unit. I was on Ferguson. Listen, I was on, I was on the Smith unit. With, he talking about the biggest ride in state jail. Right? I was on the biggest ride in TDC, period. With the, on Styles, on, on Smith unit, with the, with the, on April 2000 with the, with the essays, right? But one thing I, I, I loved about being in this, I hated, I hated being there, but the wisdom and knowledge in this, in that ride, I seen niggas who we did not get along with come together. Yeah. You feel me? I seen black people who were Crips, Bloods, and everything. They came together immediately for, for the sake of all of us. And I, like I say, this is in, in prison. You hear me? So when, when I seen that, it, it, it let me know that despite what people say, when black people are in compromising positions, they do come together. And they come together, and a lot of times they only come together in that situation when something goes bad. When something goes bad in prison between, like you say, when somebody violates the races, don't matter what, who, who you don't like. As black people, we unite quick. Let me ask you this, guys, because I gotta ask this question before we end this. How do we, how do we help affect keeping our people, our young black men, because the majority of our people are about. in prison. Like when you about. go and look, the black people overpopulate the prison. So how do we try to help to stop them from going to prison? I'll let you go first, uh, Melvin. Well, uh, actually you got to uh, look at the laws which are in prison. And you have to also understand it depends on the demographics and where you're at. Like for California, I'll speak on California. Uh, we have to get these youths because there's a lot of uh, uh, illegal immigrants over there. We right on the border. A lot of jobs are uh, being taken up where they're being paid up under the table uh, and they want you to be bilingual. Uh, the school system is three areas that has to be dressed uh, when it comes to inner cities, whether it's uh, where uh, 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 Obama calls it uh, 
pockets of poverty. That's what he called inner cities across America. Or Trump might call it a uh, rat infested, like he said. But either way it go, they was talking about communities such as where we at now. Mm -hmm. So it's three areas I think that need to be addressed: the uh, unified school district. That's where congregation and youth all the way up. Parks and recreation where niggas gather and hold mm -hmm. a uh, sarays. <laughs> and then we got the juvenile justice system. Okay. Those three areas has to be uh, 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 addressed. But also, more importantly, you have to go to your elected officials and those that are in power that getting the funding to make sure that funding is going to the proper resources to get what it's directed to. A lot of times we have these organizations, particularly when you got city council members, board of supervisors, state elected officials, they're controlling the funding that comes from the federal government. So we have to know how this works. But we also, you can't go and uh, uh, get somebody to turn their guns in for no concert ticket either. Mm. But they'll turn them in for a gun or where they can eat it, feed themselves. They have more uh, susceptible. If you can feed them, they're willing to listen more so. Mm. So those are three areas of I think need to be teched at all levels from preschool up to the highest <clears throat> level. And we have to start looking at these laws that are being uh, uh, voted on because we don't vote and uh, power in voting. So it's a lot of things, but those are the three areas that I would address on from an inner city standpoint. Thank you. Try to make a Thank you. Um, uh, OG person. I got one. I just, yeah, I want to ask you that same okay. question. I want to ask you in a way to where the area that you affect, the people that you're around, because mm -hmm. he's coming from a California right. standpoint, right. you here in it. Texas, and, and what he said really it. it involves around government, period. But yeah. What what would what would you do to help influence uh, the youth and uh, our people from going into those situations? It's only it's it's, it's one thing I'm out the and one thing I'm out the when it come down to the youth right now is the minds. If I can change their lives, they can. The only way to change your life, you got to change your mind. That's the only way. If we if we can get them to start thinking a different way, um, send their mind somewhere else besides this right here, this gonna kill them. The biggest drug on the world that, that, that you don't even got to take everybody on it right now. That's right. Everybody on this drug right here. This drug right here is killing everybody. This drug can get you killed. This drug can get you get you money. Uh, this drug will mess you off. And this drug right here, they give it to the kids too. The kids got the same drug right here. They walk around with it every day in their pocket. You dig what I'm saying? This right here is the mind changer. This whatever whatever you look at is what's on your mind. The only way to get the youth back is to change their minds. The only way to change your life, you have to change your mind. They don't, this is a bad drug. You need rehabilitation. Get them back down to um, um, digging gardens. Get back to the handwork. Everything yeah. started off telephone and tell a Negro. That's, how, that's, <laughs> that's the go. quickest way, okay. man. Okay, that's, that's that, how you I'm going to come uh, to you, uh, Mayhem. What yeah. do you, <laughs> how, can, how can we help to, 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 to our, our youth, our people, from going into those conditions? Man, I feel again, one thing that I see that we need to do, I want to be able to support and pay people like OG Percy, Melvin, Supreme. All, I, might, I want to pay these guys, overcompensate them, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Use these guys as youth mentors to go back into the hood. These guys are the perfect examples of who needs to go back. Ain't nobody better than one of us to go back in there. We don't want nobody going back front and talking to these kids mm -hmm. about something they don't know. Now, we don't have to necessarily do everything, but we want to be a facilitator. I want to get these guys and pay them and show the world. My job is to show the world why these guys are priceless, right? We come out of prison. And I tell people that all the time, man, and one thing that I have a burning desire, of, one thing I ain't got to explain, I, I know these guys, we know why, what we need to do, and we know why we need to do it. I ain't got to explain to these guys why they need to tell these kids why to stay out of prison. See, because if, if, if I can't talk to him, he can. If he can't talk to him, he can. But we don't have nobody who really will support these guys because they're going to look at him and they're going to judge him by his past and they're going to question his ability. They're going to question his character. But instead it says you need to back him, you need to support him financially. You need to enable these people because the kids really, the behind closed doors, this is who they look up to. This is who they listen to. And I tell people all the time, what really makes you OG? When you have somebody following you, and you already know people follow me. Mm. I don't have, I don't, I don't pay nobody to call me no OG. Mm -hmm. I don't ask nobody to call me no OG. No, none of that. 
They do that out, out, of, out of honor and the pre, but they do that because they watch me and they see that. And what I try to do is try to limit my talk and show them by action. But 50% of what I do is talk good. The other 50% of what I do is back up what I say, or at least do everything I can to do that. You feel me? So what I'm trying to do is to show everybody that I know that just because I've been in prison for 17 years doesn't mean that I can't maintain my composure. It doesn't mean that I'm not qualified to get people and teach kids. Uh, Saul, who wrote the foundation, Saul, who wrote the book of Acts in the Bible, was a murderer. Saul, who wrote the book of Acts, is the foundation of Christianity. If you want to learn how to be a Christian, you cannot read the whole Bible. You just need to read one book in the Bible. It's called the book of Acts. The book of Acts was wrote by a guy named Saul. Saul was a murderer. Saul was a murderer. Saul was a murderer who wrote the Bible of what the foundation of how it is to be a Christian. So when I ask people, why do I want OG Percy and Melvin and all these guys to come out here and teach people how to become better people? I ask Christians, who told you how to be a Christian? It's Saul. I got it. So that and 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 that's that's good. You talk about getting these guys, taking them back to the inner city. You talk about changing their mind, which goes with that. And then you talked about the over picture where it we talking about to governors, we talking to politicians, people who deal with the laws and and, and then some not you only are, just the laws, but that's where the breeding grounds for gang activity starts. I get it. Juvenile <laughs> where you go into jail. That's right. right. The schools when you go in the side your oats and the parks where you go to negotiate and hang Thanks. out. So those are the three three main areas in the inner city where the gang uh 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 uh, uh congregate in, in introduction, no not con well, <laughs> the youths congregate. Yeah. Hmm. You got every level, but uh, you got to remember, this is in L.A. You talking about in Death Alley, where I grew up at. You talking about a 1.8 mile area, which is the equivalent of Death Row or the uh, Bronx Bombers. You got the Rolling Sixties. You got eight trade gangsters. You got the nine olds. You got the hundreds. You got the thirties. You got the Van Ness boys. Mm. You got the twenties. You got the forties. You got the thirties. That's mm -hmm. a rough lineup over there. Yeah, it's a very rough lineup. Um, <clears throat> so when it come down to the entertain, and I'm going to ask you this, entertainment influences. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, with the entertainment influence and things the way that they, they do, um, uh, do you, how do you, and I know you guys, you, you, I know for a fact Melvin deal with a lot of entertainers. I can't say that, for, but I know you, you deal with some of the hip hoppers too. I done seen you on a few videos. Um, yeah, yeah, you video guys. How do we influence those guys to, to, to help to, uh, to change the narrative? of? Because a lot of that influences our culture. Oh, you, 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 you're not going um, to get no help on that. No, no, that's that's out the question. You, if you do, you don't get no play. How about that? I get it. If you got anything education to help, they not gonna listen. Oh, come on, you don't hear what's on the radio? Yeah. Money, money, bitches, cars, clothes. Ain't no help. Ain't no help in that. You better not say nothing to help him get a job. You better not say nothing to educate him. <laughs> Throw that shit out the window. Know how they fly your CD? They'll fly Tupac today. They'll you know, fly Tupac ass across the window and put it in the stunner. The conscious rap, yeah. be right. The conscious rap have kind of okay, fell you know, back. What you mean have? Okay, took out. Ain't no the rest of, arrest of development. Yeah, have, have anybody heard? Yeah. Anybody in here know any conscious rap that's popping right now? Like huh. the the, the like uh, common or chance anybody. and common there. Kendrick Lamar, the closest you want to get to. He, 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 he don't even got to hit on the radio right now. He don't get no play. Wow. He don't get no I play. Just, I just thought about that. They after. They after. <laughs> but don't you know don't get no play. <laughs> <laughs> Who you listen to? Yo, millionaire, Memphis, Tennessee. Okay. Yeah. Who is that? It's a new guy. It's a, a new guy in South Memphis. He a Memphis. I'm, you know, I listen to Memphis music. Okay. And but I just ask, you know, because that, that's a lot of mind. influence too, whether we want to, you know, adhere to it or not. That, that in, entertainment is business. Feeds, it, it feeds through these microphones and it feeds through these earphones just as well as people talking. And them phones is pretty much, you was talking that's about. Drug. That's pretty much where they tap into a lot of different things. You guys, um, man, like I said, you guys did a great job, man. Uh, I always enjoy sitting down at the round table with some men of you guys' stature. You know what I'm saying? August panel, as I'm calling it. But, man, Boss Talk 101 is a thing, man, and I appreciate you guys for coming on here. So, um, 
Man, when you coming back to Texas, man, you ain't gonna just leave us and don't never come back, is you? No, I'll probably be back down in about a month or something and uh, come and we get back to get kicked. That'll be good, man. And, and continue the dialogue. And, and he ain't gonna come back? back? It's bull, man. What? Man, man, can I go to California? <laughs> 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 yo, take yo, your OG yeah, first. Yeah, when he coming like, back, I'm trying yeah, to go with yeah, you. You can't leave now, nah, bro. We don't need you up out there. We need you here. I just want to do this. What? <laughs> Jump back in there. <laughs> Come on through. Come he ain't talking about it. Man, so man, man, I, I didn't we didn't talk about the book, but man, Mayhem <laughs> got this book where I always shout it out. So what 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 made you uh come up with this book one more time so people will know? Just give us a small spiel on it before again, we get out of here. Again, like you say, man, I'm an ex convict, man, and, and I'm not trying to be no author. I just try to keep young people out of prison. And I accidentally Work. know a lot of information. So I wrote a, I write books on black histories. This is about twenty seven black massacres that happened in America besides Tulsa, Oklahoma. We mostly only know about one. This is 27 black massacres that really happened in this country. This documented. You can research it yourself. You feel me? But this is just one book in uh, four. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I write about all black history. But anyway, you can check it out. It's available on Amazon, Amazon or my uh, website, which is mayhemdementor.com. Thank you so much, man. Hey, guys, man. Appreciate you guys, man. Okay, okay, so okay. Check, check it, man. Okay. Uh, my boy, uh, 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 Supreme, uh, Money Moses, Michelle. everybody that came today, man, to, uh, to, you know, to see I'm that people can come Michelle. together on a panel and we can come together and we can talk sensibly and come back. And, you know, and like I said, I want to kind of do this. I want to do stuff like this to where we can show people that yeah. we do connect. And Watch I think me. it helps. Yeah, what it do works. you think? It does help. Yeah, we got to start off with a conversation, say, uh, right? They say a conversation run the nation, but the understanding beat everything. Yes, Damn. sir. Yes, sir. So thank you guys, yes, man, so much for coming on, on the show. Okay. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss Boom. talk.